This week, your consumer guide presents its report on religions. Of the dozens of products on the market, we investigated the following six. Judaism, the Roman Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, Islam, and Communism. We ruled out Hinduism because it embodies a caste system which we felt was alien to the British consumer. <laughs> However, the Hindu does believe that animals have souls, every bit as good as human ones. In this sense, it could be said that every Englishman is a Hindu at heart. We began by applying three basic tests. A, what you put into it, B, what you get out of it, and C, how much does it cost? <laughs> Judaism. This is the oldest religion we tested. Its small number of users, 13 million, is deceptive since many large and powerful subsidiaries derive from it. A, what do you put into it? Belief in one only God, several do's and don'ts. Never, never prepare milk and meat in the same dish. Do no work between sunset on Friday and sunset on Saturday. And you must cut off the foreskins of your male children. B, what do you get out of it? <laughs> Membership of the oldest club in the world. Prayers and advice are tailored to fit most consumer crises and can also be newly bespoke. You are one of the chosen people. This gives confidence and we particularly like the guarantee of eternal life through the Messiah who will take responsibility for all your guilt when he arrives. <laughs> See, what does it cost? In crockery alone, the expense is fantastic. <laughs> Plus the wages of a reliable Gentile to run the business between sunset on Friday and sunset on Friday. <laughs> Infertility is the only grounds for divorce. We did not try to obtain one. <laughs> we next tested the Roman Catholic Church. The vigorous new ideas of this splendid corporation were largely pioneered by the previous group. But a sales organization has enabled it to far outstrip the parent company with 340 million current users. Applying the tests, we found A, what do you put into it? Belief in only one Godhead operating on a troika basis. <laughs> we must stress here that the idea that the head or pope, as he is called, claims infallibility in all matters is a fallacy. The pope cannot tell you which television set is the best. <laughs> His infallibility is strictly limited to matters of faith. faith. He can only tell you which television programs you mustn't watch. B, what do you get out of it? Principally the new Christianity. The confessional mechanism is standard. The rule here is don't, but if you must, confess as soon as possible afterwards. <laughs> we found this very useful. A comprehensive life and death advisory service is available from a priesthood unencumbered by family ties. With Roman Catholicism comes a guarantee that it is the only true faith and exclusive personal survival in heaven is assured. On the whole, we found this product deeply satisfying. <laughs> what does it cost? A drawback. It is very expensive. During a visit to head office in Rome, a rosary or aid to prayer cost 100 lira. Devotional pictures, 40 lira a time. We were charged 200 lira to see the catacombs. 300 lira to enter the Sistine Chapel, which is very dark, very dark indeed. And a tour of the anterooms of St. Peter's Basilica cost 300 lira in tips alone. We found it impossible to obtain a divorce. <laughs> Protestantism. Protestantism is a breakaway from the Roman parent organization. Two main brands are available. The big Church of England or the nonconformist economy pack. <laughs> what do you put into it? Belief that the Queen should be the head of the church. Be belief that the Prime Minister should appoint the Archbishop of Canterbury and belief in God. <laughs> what do you get out of it? Independence. How much does it cost? Surprisingly little. We found no difficulty in obtaining a divorce. <laughs> we next turn to Islam, with 270 million current users, founded 1,300 years ago. It is necessary here to believe in one only God and his true prophet, Muhammad. Begin services with the lesser ablution, wudu, of face, hands and feet, the greater ablution, or guzel, is being required only after legal pollution, of course. Um, recite the creed with full understanding once in your life, go to Mecca once in the life. When you get there, put on two seamless wrappers, do not shave, trim nails, or anoint the head. Visit the sacred mosque, Majid al Hayr, of course, and um, kiss the black stone, go around the Kaaba three times, then four times, three times walking, 
four times running, seven times in all, of course. Visit the Makam Ibrahim, clown Mount Saspar, run from it to Mount Marwa seven times, go to Mazdalifa, stay the night, throw stones at the three pillars of Mina on the great feast day, <laughs> offer sacrifice, and if convenient, visit the tomb of Muhammad. What do you get out of it? Up to five wives. <laughs> How much does it cost? We had to buy a mat, and we found it very exhausting. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't need to obtain a divorce. Um, Buddhism. Now, this was the second oldest religion that we tested. It's man-made, flexible, and was designed by Buddha 2,522 years ago. B, what do you get out of it? Nirvana, or a sense of non-being. What does it cost? Nothing. We didn't try to obtain a divorce. We don't understand why communism is on the market at all. It's very recent, mass-produced, and its chief profit appears to have no background in the industry at all. <laughs> the claim that this shoddy product must inevitably replace all the others in the market we found rather shocking. As in the Church of England, we found no difficulty in obtaining a divorce. In conclusion, we found that as a reward for the good life, all the better religions claim to offer eternal happiness in an everlasting heaven. We decided to test these claims, but were unfortunately unable to find anyone who would undertake this. <laughs> we apologize for our failure to verify this important aspect of the product. In choosing the Best Buy, we rejected Islam as a cut-price form of Judaism. Um, we liked Buddhism, but the product does not travel well and thrives best in a warm climate. <laughs> Judaism, we thought, frankly, unsafe. We recommend that unless you have it from birth, you would do well to avoid this product. <laughs> If you can afford it, Roman Catholicism, with its continental line plus international performance, is well worth having. But we suggest you should think carefully before deciding on it, as it's by no means trouble-free. The attraction of the Church of England lies in its democratic spirit. If you want transubstantiation, you can have transubstantiation. If you don't want transubstantiation, then you don't have to have it. You can just walk down the road into another Church of England church and not have it. If you want Mass, you can have Mass. If you want Immaculate Conception, you can have that too. But nobody will force you to have it if you don't want it. <laughs> and the church speaks to you in English. Of course, what will happen if we go to the common market? God only knows. <laughs> but we think it will still be there, speaking to you in English. And it's a jolly friendly faith. If you are one, there's no onus on you to make anybody else join. In fact, no one need ever know. <laughs> and it's pretty fair on the whole, too, with some of these products that we've mentioned, Roman Catholicism and Judaism, for instance, you start guilty from the off. <laughs> but the Church of England is English. On the whole, you start pretty well innocent, and they've got to prove you're guilty. <laughs> all in all, we think you get a jolly good little faith for a very moderate outlay, and we have no hesitation in proclaiming it the best buy. Yeah.